every time one of the sense doors arises, there's feeling and then there's craving. And what is the craving? It manifests as tightness. It manifests as tension in your body. It manifests as the identification with whatever sense door arises. This is me. This is mine. This is who I am. Now you notice it said something about mind objects as being one of the sense doors. So that means every time there's a thought, right after that thought there's a feeling and then the craving arises. The only way you can have the cessation of craving is by opening up and allowing it to be and relaxing, letting go of that tightness, that manifestation of craving. And you've heard me say it many times before, when you let go of that tightness, you feel open. And then your mind takes a little step down and becomes very calm. There's no thoughts. There's only pure awareness. And you bring that pure awareness back to your object of meditation. And this is the major difference between one-pointed concentration and tranquility. One-pointed concentration, you can let go of one of the six sense doors, but immediately you come back to your object of meditation. It doesn't matter whether it's moment-to-moment -moment concentration or absorption concentration. You do it in the same way. So you're bringing back this subtle ego belief and craving back to your object of meditation. Because of that one small thing, it will stop anyone from attaining Nibbana, the true Nibbana, the super mundane Nibbana. Just by letting go of that little tightness, that little tension and relaxing, and bringing that pure mind back to your object of meditation, that opens the way for you to have a completely unattached mind. And with that unattached mind, Nibbana can occur. And it can occur at any time once you start getting into the jhanas. But that subtle letting go is absolutely necessary because that's where the manifestation of I am that starts. That's why when you have so many different people that might be brilliant meditators start talking about the ego and they always talk about you got to let it go. They're talking in such general terms, in such gross terms. And people have such a different idea of what ego is. Ego is the thing that binds everything together and causes all of the suffering. It manifests as craving. So opening and letting go. Not continually opening and letting it go if, if that tightness doesn't go away. Just one time. You're distracted, let go. Relax one time. Come back to your object of meditation. Because you weren't able to let it go, you'll bounce back and forth with this until you do let it go. And when you do let it go, then your mind becomes more clear, more bright, and you go deeper into your meditation. The practice of loving kindness is really brilliant because when you're radiating loving kindness and you're staying on the object of meditation with interest, there's no tightness, there's no tensions. There's only the opening up and expanding but as soon as there's a little bit of disturbance and that little sneaky tension and tightness comes up first and then it starts causing all of these other things to arise, now you have to work 
until you can let it go and get back to this pure state. There's no other way. And this is the teaching of the Buddha. This is why it's such an incredibly brilliant way of mental development. And that's how you start following the Noble Eightfold Path completely, by getting into the jhanas. The last factor in the Eightfold Path is always translated as right concentration, but it makes me cringe using that word because it's so misunderstood. You are developing a kind of concentration, but it's a tranquil concentration. It's not one-pointed. The thing that makes concentration one-pointed is bringing back that subtle ego tightness and belief back to your object of meditation. And then your mind goes very deep, but it also suppresses a big part of your personality with the tranquility meditation, that opening and relaxing, the letting go, there is no suppression of anything. There is only the complete loving acceptance and openness and complete relaxation in your body, in your mind. And with that mind, that pure mind that's not clouded by any kind of disturbance, that is how you will be able to experience Nibbana, the super mundane Nibbana. So if you don't have any craving, then you won't have any clinging. And if you don't have any clinging, then there's no being. And without any being, there's no birth. And without birth, there's no death in old age. So you can see how this is right view because you have the Four Noble Truths with each one of these different parts of dependent origination. And dependent origination is the Four Noble Truths. On the night that the Buddha became enlightened and the next day, he sat going forward only with dependent origination. And then he sat going backwards only with dependent origination. And then he went forwards and backwards until he understood it very well. And this is the thing that when Ananda came to him one day, he said, oh, dependent origination, it's so simple. It's so easy to understand. The Buddha scolded him. And he said, this is not easy to understand. This is not simple. It takes a Buddha to come into existence to refine the subtleness of the way mind and body work. It takes a Buddha mind to be able to see it so clearly and then be able to explain it to other people. And with that explanation, many people become enlightened.